guys, welcome back to Renner Stock Farms. We are going to give you guys a walk around of our 5020 Detroit and do some plowing with it. So let's get it warmed up and we'll take it out to the field. Outside the shed right now we just got done moving some stuff around and figured now would be a good time to get this tractor out and talk about it a little bit so uh, this is the one that I restored uh, it took me about a year and a half that was really off and on there was a spurt where I didn't work on it for a while um, but here it is now it's done so basically what this is is a 50 10 slash 20 um, Detroit repower we're not we're not sure if it's a Kinsey we think it might be um, there's a couple things you can look for on a 5020 uh, if it's a Kinsey repower or not. But what really sets this one apart is that it's got the um, the turbo. So all the repowers that I've seen, they're just the the um, the Detroit and the Detroit they all have superchargers on them. But this one's got a turbo feeding the supercharger. So that's what really makes this one special. We've got a set of 932s on the rear and I welded a set of rims that kind of help push the the walls of the tire out a little bit bigger or a little bit wider so it um, gave it a really nice profile. In the fronts we have 16.5, 16.1s. We kind of based it off uh, John Kinzenbau. Um, we kind of based it off the one that he has in his uh, innovation center. He's got one, I think it's got 35.5, 32s and that's just about the same size and he used 16.5, 16.1s on his tractor so we kind of went off what he did and it made it sit really nice and level. So we got this tractor, it had a cab on it. To cover the turbo where they where they mounted it, they made a really big uh, clumsy kind of looking um, shield that went around the turbo and bolted to the cab. And since we took the cab off, we couldn't reuse that. So we went ahead and took a small LP tank and uh, formed it to the hood and um, it turned out pretty good. There's a lot of clearance up in there under that. Uh, tank it's it's hard to see far away but when you get up close to it you can see the exhaust pipe is um, is welded so the 90 degree elbow that comes up out of the hood that was rusted out when we got this tractor so I uh, put a new one on and I welded that top pipe together and then smoothed it out with a grinder and then we got it chrome so it's a nice one one piece straight pipe with no clamps anywhere except for where it connects under the hood this tractor has the Wheatland fenders. Shout out to Lance Little. We got those from him. He rolled into our farm one day with those on his trailer and they didn't leave. So um, thanks for, for letting us buy those off you. It really, really made this tractor um, one of a kind. Uh, we've also got the big uh, 5010 dust shields that um, go with those fenders and new lights all around. To get clean air to the turbo, we got a canister off an old semi 
and I built a bracket that holds it up and the bracket is also the stairs um, to get onto the tractor and I used uh, um, John Deere steps we had laying around. So another big thing we did was um, incorporate a, a weight bracket system in the front of this tractor. So with these frame rails and how everything is set up, we couldn't use the regular um, mounting bars. So instead of doing that, we had these new bars bent and I welded it all up, drilled the right holes where they're supposed to be, and um, yeah, made a nice little uh, weight bracket for this tractor. And it's got the starter weight with the, uh, the double stack. So you probably noticed that there's no decal on this tractor. There's no 5010 or 5020 decal. And that's kind of because it's, it's, it's both of them. We've got parts from each, each tractor on this tractor. Um, it's got a 5010 fuel tank, 5010 front axle, 5010 dust shields and Wheatland fenders. And then the transmission and all that is off of, uh, off of a 5020. Um, when we got this tractor, the transmission had some, some major problems and we knew of a guy that had um, a 5020 that got rebuilt back in the day, the rear end got rebuilt. Um, so we bought that, split both tractors, swapped the rear ends, and put it all back together. So it's got parts from both on this tractor, so it's kind of hard to label it. And the only good place to label it would be like right here, and it's just, that's not right. So when we got this tractor, it had two radiators in it to, to really help cool this thing down. When we decided to rebuild this, we took out the front radiator, which is uh, where the fuel tank, where the fuel tank is now. That's where the front radiator was. We took that out and the bigger radiator, we put a radiator in there that had one extra core. So it takes a lot to get this thing over 190 degrees. Uh, so it's, it's cooling really well. And since we removed that front radiator, we had room to put the 5010 tank back in this tractor. Um, we couldn't fit a 5020 tank. The 5020 tank is, is a lot bigger. Another thing that makes this tractor really cool is we changed all the hydraulics over to a console. Um, all 5020s had their hydraulics up on the dash. The actual hydraulic remotes sat where they put the turbo. So, of course, they had to move them. We were lucky that they did all that before we got a hold of it which that was way back when um, they were still using it. So they put all the remotes on the back of the tractor and I took a console off of a 4620 and put it up there and made all the linkages and um, got all that to work. It's got two remotes and they both work in the console and it's also got a three point hitch with a quick attach on the back and that also works in the console. So that's another cool thing that we did to this, this tractor among everything else. It's got a synchro range transmission. We pull a six bottom John Deere 3600 plow and it'll pull it in fifth or sixth gear depending on conditions. Um, sixth gear you can run a little bit lower RPM which is helpful to your ears and uh, it does really well. You can run sixth gear about 1800 RPM and it does a really good job or you can run fifth gear uh, wide open and uh, that's also really fun. So. Handles the six bottom plow really well. It could pull a seven bottom, but um, the six bottom we can kind of move around to a couple different tractors. So instead of getting uh, instead of getting all of our plows dirty, well, we just get the six bottom out and have a little bit of fun. It's it's just for fun, you know. So that's about all I got for you guys on this tractor. Um, I appreciate you guys checking this out. If you want to see more tractors like this in action, be sure to subscribe to our channel. I try to put out a couple videos a week, um, depending on what's what's going on. Um, we've got a whole collection of tractors and horse-drawn equipment. Uh, you may have seen us on RFD TV or Machinery Pete or Heritage Iron. Um, so if you guys know about that, you guys know what's to come. If not, stick around. We've got a lot more videos coming and a lot more stuff to show you guys. And I also do farming videos, um, like vlogs and stuff. So. Thanks for checking us out. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one.